Good afternoon and welcome to Performance St. Paul's at St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Key West, Florida. And welcome to our 14th week in exploring and taking a journey to explore the psalm, hymn, and folk melodies that have been used in the church through the ages and arranged for the organ. I would be remiss if I were not to mention Paul Mons and the importance he brought to the music field, to organists and congregations alike around the U.S. and the world, and how he brought alive the significance of singing the hymns and psalms in church. I started living with Paul Mons in 1975 at my very first organ job at Gloria Day Lutheran Church in Lakewood, New York, overlooking the beautiful Chautauqua Lake in western New York. His settings have so many meanings for us as organists and cantors, and even more to those who worship God in his church, his congregation, his sheep, his flock. If this is an introduction of Mr. Mons to you for the very first time, I hope that you enjoy it. I would first like to play his setting of Praise to the Lord the Almighty. The hymn tune is Lobe den Herren, number 390 in our 1982 hymnal. Praise to the Lord the Almighty, the King of creation. O oh, my soul, praise him, for he is thy health and salvation. Join the great throng, psaltery, organ, and song, sounding in glad adoration. Mr. Mons was born in Cleveland, Ohio in 1919 and died in St. Uh, Paul, Minnesota in 2009 at the age of 90. As a performer, he played at venues like the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C. with the National Symphony, Symphony Center in Chicago with the Chicago Symphony, and Orchestra Hall in Minneapolis with the Minnesota Symphony. He worked with conductors like Leonard Slatkin, Charles Dutois, and Henry Charles Smith. While his career as a soloist took him around the world, he felt most called to be a leader of people in congregational singing. Mons reinvented the classic organ chorale of Buxtehude and Bach, giving it a new voice which spoke clearly and unapologetically with a fresh American flavor. 
Many of his contemporaries followed suit in this, and the modern-day hymn festival was born under his tutelage. Here are two more of his chorale preludes, All Glory Be to God on High, hymn number 421, and Renew Me, Eternal Light. If you have the Lutheran Book of Worship, it is found as hymn number 511. Renew me, O eternal light, and let my heart and soul be bright, illumined with the light of grace that issues from your holy face. But first, all glory be to God on high, hymn number 421.
Love divine, all love excelling, Heifredal, is a tune I am sure you well know. It is number 657 in our 1982 hymnal. I will follow it with a setting of All Praise to Thee, My God, This Night, number 43. This tune, composed by Thomas Tallis, is now nearly 500 years old and often sung in the form of a canon. Christ is made the sure foundation, Christ the head and cornerstone, chosen of the Lord and precious, building all his church in one. 
Holy Zion, help forever and her confidence alone. This is hymn number 518 to the tune Westminster Abbey. was a well-educated musician, having trained as an educator at Concordia Teachers College in River Forest, Illinois, now Concordia University, Chicago, and received a master's degree in music from Northwestern University. He was also a Fulbright scholar and received a grant to study with Flor Peters in Belgium and Helmut Walcher in Germany. He was highly regarded and received many honors in his career. He was twice named one of the most, ten most influential Lutherans. He served as National Counselor of the American Guild of Organists and is listed as one of the 101 most notable organists of the 20th century. High acolytes, indeed. In 1946, he began his calling as a full-time director of Christian education and music at Mount Olive Lutheran Church in Minneapolis a relationship that would last 37 years. Mons served on the faculties at the University of Minnesota, Minnesota and McAllister College in St. Paul before he accepted a call in 1957 to serve as professor and chair of the Division of Fine Arts at Concordia College in St. Paul. Mount Olive arranged for Mr. Mons's duties to be part-time, allowing him to share his gifts at both institutions. It was during all of these formulative years that he acclimated himself to the hymns of the great liturgical churches. Here we find two more of his arrangements, Oh, that I had a thousand voices, and the well hymn, Now thank we all our God, hymn number 397.
the mid-1980s, Mr. Mons and his wife pulled up stakes from Minnesota and moved to Chicago. There, more church work and university jobs found him, and he was quickly busy again. It had always been a dream of his to start his own Paul Mons Institute of Music to serve the minister, the musician, and the congregants to better worship experiences through history and education. In 1992, his dream was born. Just seven years later, at his 80th birthday, retirement was decided. He truly had many blessings, and another blessing, his family in Minnesota were waiting for him. These next three pieces must have been on his mind during that transition time. Come, thou font of every blessing, be thou my vision, and let us ever walk with Jesus. The first two hymns are in our hymnal, 686 and 488.
you have heard the next melody many times in your life, even in these last 14 weeks. The 16th century Welsh melody, Ard Herdinos, was set in the mid-1960s by Mr. Mons, meaning all through the night. Sleep a while and peace attend thee all through the night. Guardian angels, God will lend thee all through the night. Soft the dreamy hours are creeping, hill and vale in slumber sleeping. God alone is watch is keeping all through the night. And most religious texts and hymnals say, God, who made the earth and heaven, darkness and light, you the day for work have given for rest the night. May your angels guard defend us. Slumber sweet your mercy send us. Holy dreams and hopes attend us all through the night. Paul Mons's organ and choral works are internationally known and are used extensively in worship services, recitals and teaching, and by churches and college choirs. His works will continue to find their place in the church and make their way to the hearts of those who hear them. The next two pieces that I will play are, Lord, you I love with all my heart, and let the whole creation cry. These two tunes find their roots in the 15th and 16th and early 17th century German tradition. Lord, you I love with all my heart, composed by Bernard Schmidt, the elder, was part of a group of 16th century German uh, organ composers that heavily ornamented their compositions following Italian coloraturas and other figures, and known as the colorists. Interestingly enough, Listen to how Mr. Mons has so simply set the tune. Let the whole creation cry was originally composed by Jacob Hintz, who lived from 1622 to 1702. An editor and composer, Praxis Pietatis Medica, or Practice of Piety and Song, 
was a Protestant hymnal first published in the 17th century by Johann Kruger and edited by Mr. Hintz. Mr. Hintz also included 85 of his own hymn tunes, mostly not sung or even known today. The hymnal, with 45 editions from 1647 to 1737, has been described as the most successful and widely known Lutheran hymnal of the 17th century.
my last piece to today can easily stand as Mr. Mons's most famous and popular chorale prelude. Composed in 1974, here is God of Grace, set to another Welsh melody, Cumranda. God of grace and God of glory, on your people pour your power. Crown your ancient church's story, bring its bud to glorious flower. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this hour. I again want to thank you for your time spent with me today. I hope that this music has been uplifting and relaxing during these ever-changing times. I don't know yet what music I have in store for you next week, but I hope that you have the time to stop by and listen for a while. Have a safe and happy holiday, and as always, Solideo Gloria. <laughs>